Welcome to the Make It a Great Day movement, where we are making suicide a thing of the past. You're in the right place if you're looking for the suicide prevention show. We're putting the fun into suicide prevention. Why? Because if you're having fun, you've prevented the problem. And that's why we're here. And oh, let me bring myself on camera. Ta-da! I'm Jackie Simmons. I'm the host of the show. I am super excited that you are here. We have been having amazing conversations, and now we're going to take conversation to a whole new level. What if all words matter? Our next guest is Cesar Espino, and how changing your language changes your life. When he said that he was available to come on the show, I was super excited because it's our last guest, Dr. L, was talking about when we can control what we put in our mouth, that's a huge step forward. And when we control what comes out of our mouth, that's the other piece of the story. This is our first locus of control, the first place that we can actually do this. We just didn't know it. And now we're going to take this one step further out of the rabbit hole and into reality. So Caesar, come on up. Let's see. He's in the green room. Now we have to get him to turn on his camera. Oh, maybe I have to turn on his camera. Let's just see. Ask to start video. Caesar, say there, there you, you are. are. <laughs> How are you? I am well. Oh my God, I'm super excited to see you. Yes, I'm excited to see you too, Jackie. Thank you so much for having me here today. Um, I cannot wait to you know, have this conversation with you because words do matter. Words do matter. All right. So if words do matter and all words matter, you speak words in how many languages? Two, two languages. Two. Okay. All right. Because I know that that makes words matter in a very different way sometimes. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So cool. All right. So we're going to start this journey. All right. We're going to start this journey with what are the words? Um, I'm going to have to have somebody check on something in the chat for me, but what are the words that really matter? What yeah. are the words that got you started on this conversation? Because what you've been doing to change the world super impresses me. And I, I'm jumping into the, the end of the story with you, but I'm hoping along the way you'll tell us how it started. Yeah, definitely. Well, I, I can definitely tell you that there's definitely uh, a, a lot of words that we have to be very careful. And, and before I get to that, uh, because there's definitely different elements that go into that, when we talk about whether it's your business, whether it's your personal life, whether it's a relationship, um, a lot of times we forget how we speak to other people. More so important, we forget how we speak to ourselves, right? And so the biggest thing is that when we're talking about words, there, there's this component, communication, right? And communication is composed of three different aspects. The first thing is you have your physiology, right? How you present yourself in front of somebody, whether you're doing a presentation, whether it's face-to-face, -face, it's like how are you presenting yourself? And that can translate to many different aspects. When we're talking about people that are going through some challenging times, if, they, if you see in their physiology that they're kind of down, that's a sign that maybe there's something wrong with that, you know, something wrong within that person. And you can definitely uh, approach them to be able to help them. The physiology is 63% of the total communication that we do day in and day out, right? The next thing or the next aspect is uh, your tonality. Right? How are you talking to people? Are you uh, being loud? Are you being soft? Are you um, really portraying your, your voice to be able to get that message across? Right? Again, that's also critical when you're communicating with people. And that's 30% of the uh, total communication. And then finally, we have words. Words is only 7%. And so you might be asking me, Caesar, if it's only 7%, why do they matter? Well, in the contrary, they do, right? The fact that they're only 7%, more so why you have to be careful and watch how you speak to yourself and how you speak to other people because that's going to make a big difference in your relationships, building relationships, period, you know? Okay, so now I know that your cultural way of expressing yourself <laughs> is a little faster than mine. And by the way, I was trained... I had to train to slow down because I'm really from the South. When in the South, we talk kind of fast. But, yes. So 
I want to just encourage anyone who has a question, if because you're covering a lot of information. So anyone who has a question, pop this into the chat, because what you said was really important. You're going, why do words matter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're only 7% of how we communicate anything. Our tonality, the way we say it, fast, slow, high, low, this is a bigger part than words according to communication. Mm -hmm. And physiology, you know, are we looking people in the eye? Are we you know, actually physically present with them? In this day and age where we have less physical contact, where we even have less voice to voice communication. And now, because of the written word and the electronic word, we are totally dependent on words conveying 100% of the communication when that's not what they were designed for. They're not designed to carry that load. So they matter more now because because that's an amazing place to be. Because I hadn't thought about it until you were talking. I'm going, wait a minute. Um, hmm. So let's come back into this. What, what brought you into this journey? I yeah. mean, why words? <laughs> yeah, de definitely. For, for me, it, it, you know, throughout my journey, and, and I, I'm doing different things now, Throughout my journey, it was more of, I thought everything was okay, um, you know, working at corporate America, just having that um, nine to five job, not really paying attention to how I was speaking to myself or how I was speaking to other people. I decided to take what I consider to be a transformational phase. I ended up transforming myself in different aspects. Number one was self-development, self-care, uh, watching the things that, I, that I'm saying to myself and others, right? I'll give you an example. We're so easily uh, uh, accustomed to judging ourselves, right? We do this all the time. We, we talk to ourselves and we might do something that maybe it turned out to be not so, so good in a negative aspect. And the first thing that maybe might come to your mind is like, oh my God, you know, you're so dumb or you're this or you're that. And you start calling yourself names without even thinking about it. You're calling yourself names. And what you're doing though is you're actually programming the unconscious mind so that it can believe that what you're telling yourself is true. And then you become more so of that. And so when I, I, I began this journey of uh, being part of communities like this, uh, in uh, networking events, having mentors and, and, and people alike, and I actually now uh, have taken that further and I'm also an NLP practitioner. So when you start looking at the quantum physics of all of that, it's like, wow, it is so amazing and, and, and powerful that we watch how we speak to ourselves and how we speak to other people. That journey has changed many different aspects because when I decided to take that, that journey, um, it definitely opened up more things for, for myself in, in, in connecting with people where before I didn't have that, right? And so it's, it's very important for us to, to really look at it from that perspective. What are the possibilities that can come out of that? Uh, and, and also realizing that, you know, that self-sabotaging, how you're talking to yourself, you're just putting programs into your mind. Okay, so self-sabotage, how you talk to yourself. You cover an awful lot. Well, I'm going to peel this back. Because mm -hmm. you used an acronym, and I just want to make sure that everyone knows the words that go with the acronym. Yep, for sure. All right. So you said NLP. Yep, so that's a neuro-linguistic programming. Got it. So neuro-linguistic programming. What's so good about neuro-linguistic programming? Why did you start studying? So neuro-linguistic is, neuro is the brain, right? Linguistic is, is the language, and then programming is the programs that go into the brain, right? Mm -hmm. And so why I decided to, to go to that journey and start learning more about it is because again, our life is, is again, you have the unconscious mind and you have the conscious mind, right? The yeah. conscious mind is primarily, is, is the critical factor. You know, it, it tells, is, is, is thinking, is, is doing all of that stuff that we kind of see right now. You know, this makes sense, this program is good. You know, he's, he's bald, whatever the case may be, is that critical factor of that, right? The unconscious mind is nearly a computer. It, it, you know, if you think about a computer and you have this program that is super awesome and you put this program into that computer, whatever you put into that computer, you're going to get back. 
right? If it's a very bad program or something that is not so productive, whatever you put into that computer is going to give back, right? If you're typing um, something on Word, whatever you, you type in is going gonna, is gonna to show up on the screen, right? So the unconscious mind is a, a, a nearly a computer. And so when we're talking about why all words do matter and how they can change your life, it really can, because again, it, you're putting programs into the unconscious mind, which then is going to really dictate the conscious mind on how to act, how to talk, how to you know look at people, and 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 just do, doing things from that perspective, right? And so. Uh, for me, when I decided to join, that is like I wanted to learn more. Like, what can I do now to continue to expand? In, in, you know, in my own personal life, I do believe that what you focus upon will expand, right? And uh, going through challenges, there's a purpose for everything that we do. There's a purpose in life. So when we have those negative thoughts or or that self sabotaging, we have to look at, you know, what what is there more for us to do in life, and how can I change that, right? What is there more for us to do in life? That's an interesting question. What is there more for us to do in life? Cool. All right. So what is it that you're doing now? Now that you've, you've been on this journey, you started mm -hmm. exploring this, you decided you really liked it because you have sort <laughs> of deep dove in, into this whole linguistic side of right. how do words impact the brain? So what does somebody do with this? I mean, why does it matter so much? Yeah, so the first thing is you need to realize and you need to recognize that um, you have to change those programs, right? We go back to the programs that are going into your, into, your, into your brain, right? And again, there's two different types of programs, right? There are the programs that are being projected to you. Somebody's speaking something over to you. And then there's a pro, uh, the, the programs that you're projecting out to other people. Whichever way you see it, you're still listening to those programs. And so you have to be conscious of that and you got to be careful on those words. So I'm going to give you a list of words that in my, in my opinion, my suggestion, you want to be able to replace or little by little stop utilizing them because they're not going to serve you any purpose, right? And so if I can, I will dive into that. One of the first things that we hear a lot from people uh, is the word try, you know, I'm going to try to see you. I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to do that. When, when you look at that word, try, there's really no, no meaning to that. There's, there's really no value to that. Right. And what I mean by that, if I, I, if I show you and I say, can you try to pick up this phone and you go out and you pick up the phone? I'm like, no, I say, can you try to pick up the phone? The state of mind is either you either do or you don't. There's no in between. Yoda. And so, Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, we yes. have Yoda. In yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. And so when you think about that, you know, try is kind of like a, a, a escape uh, route, right? You're, 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 you're as, I say, hey, Jackie, I want to have lunch with you tomorrow. Um, I'll try to see you at 12 and you go to the restaurant and you're waiting for me. And the next day, like, hey, Caesar, you told me you were going to go to lunch with me and I was waiting for you. I didn't see you. And I said, yeah, I tried. And, and again, we got to be able to, to, to remove that because, again, that right there can create relationships that are so amazing um, because it's more powerful when you're committing to something. It's, it's, it's a, a lack of commitment at the end of the day. So what do we replace it with? Because I know. So, yeah. So, so try pretty much either you do or you don't, right? The, okay. the, the replacement of that is either you are going to be committed to it or you're not going to be committed to it. Do it or don't. Okay, so I'm going to put a word out there. You tell me, because I can think of a couple of different mm -hmm. ones. Okay. Instead of try, I would say um, maybe plan. Um, mm -hmm. And if I was actually making a commitment, I would simply say, I will. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You either okay. you're doing or you're done. Correct. Got it. got it, got it, got it. Do it or don't. And the language when I'm talking to somebody else, I'm not going to say I'm going to do it. I'm going right. to say, well, I might say I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm going to do it or I will, I will meet you tomorrow for lunch. Yeah. It's like right. a good plan actually, Caesar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> right. And, and again, it comes down to that, right? You, you have more of that commitment too. And, and it really it speaks volumes when you're building, uh, especially if you're building relationships in, in, in anything, right? Specifically mm -hmm. if you're uh, uh, trying to uh, bring some business too into the picture. All right. So there we go. So, What's the next one? The next word is can't. I cannot do this. I, uh, 
whatever, right? We use that a lot. And, and so if we start thinking about it from a different perspective, it, it's as simple as this. Either you do not know how to do it or you just don't want to do it, right? It, there's no such thing as can't. If you don't know how to do it, go out and find, you know, how to do it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, just say, I'm not going to do it. That's it. Again, don't commit to something that you're, you're not. Um, if you do not know how to do it, find out how to do it. There's so much resources. Talk to people and, and come back and say, you know what? Yes, I'll do it. it it'll take me X, Y, and C days or, or hours or whatever the case may be, right? Mm-hmm. So instead of can't, understand that is either a state of mind of do not know how to do it or I just don't want to do it, right? So it's not so much replacing the word. It's more of understanding the state of mind on okay. this one. If I'm not willing to do it, I would just say I don't want to do it. Exactly. Got it. Okay, so we've replaced can't with I don't want to or this is how or, you know, whatever. Or, or just don't know how to do it. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Right. The next one is uh, the word but or however, right? And we use it a lot, right? And uh, I'll give you an example. You know, a lot of times, you know, in business, right? I, I used to work for corporate America and I go into my boss office and he'll say, hey, thank you for the report. You know, the, that report was pretty awesome, but you know, it's missing this, this, and this, and that, right? Mm-hmm. Well, by that statement, you just negated everything before that. So you you degraded my the compliment, right? And so, and same thing when you use however, right? You're negating anything that became that came before that. So instead of saying but or however, replace that word with n, right? A and uh, D and a, yeah, n a and d. Ah, okay. Right. So, so you're adding to it. Right. Because now, although uh, you you might be looking at it from that perspective in that scenario, it's like, you know what, Caesar, that report was good. And I want to see this, this, and this. You're not really degrading my my work. You're still complimenting me and you're asking more of me because you enjoyed that relationship, right? So you want to be able to remove that in any aspect when you're talking to people. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me so far. All right. Okay. So we've got try letting that go and replacing it with will, you know, yep. making a commitment. Yep. Um, can't, and we place that with either, you know, I'm willing to, even if I don't know how, or, right. or you're not. I'm not willing to. Correct. And, but however, those things that turn the energy in a sentence around, yep. replacing those with the word and, so that the energy stays in the same alignment. Yes, correct. Cool. All right. All right. I'm with you so far. What awesome. Next? The next word is no. Now we hear this a lot, right? In anything, in many things that we do, we hear people say, nope, you cannot have this. Nope, I, I don't want that. It's like a kid comes to you and says, hey, mom, dad, um, I feel like I want to eat today, uh, uh, I don't know, McDonald's. And, and, and then the first answer is no. The kid is going to be very upset, pretty sad, or is like, mm-hmm. it's going to be, it's going to change the physiology, right? And so what if instead of saying no, you say yes and now, it's a, it, this is a, a, a different uh, framing of the word or, or the result. Instead of saying no, you're going to say yes and. So in that scenario, hey, mom, dad, I want McDonald's. I'm going to say yes and. I was thinking more like Burger King or more like uh, Subway, right? I'm not degrading or I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm pretty much agreeing to disagree in a positive way, in that positive energy. Okay, there we go. I'm going to unpack that one. You're yeah. agreeing to disagree in a positive energy. The end mm-hmm. result is that the answer is no to whatever. Correct. Um, but the energy of the conversation leads more to a conversation. Mm-hmm. So, yes, it's- and, okay, um, I can see where there could be some situations. So we're going to play stump the Caesar today. Mm-hmm. And if you've got a question somebody could ask, that if they tried the yes and, it wouldn't work. If they, anybody who's got one of those scenarios can pop it in here, pop it in here, um, pop it in the chat. And the reason I want you all to put those in is because this is creative use of language. Mm-hmm. And finding different ways to apply it is really magical. So we're going to be looking for the magic in the words that matter here. All right. So instead of no, it's a yes and. Is there another option? Not necessarily. I, I think okay. uh, at because the end of the day. One size fits all option. Right. Oh, exactly. we're going to play Stump the Caesar. Okay, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> 
Awesome. <laughs> All right. So some, somebody is, uh, yeah, somebody's giving me a hard time. And I'll tell you the joke. But yeah, there was a comment in here. Makes me sad when you don't listen. And, oh, I love you. And it makes me sad when you don't listen. And, and that's more positive, right? And when you think yeah. about it, it, it doesn't come to like uh, intruding or, or defensive. You're, you're, you know, hey, I, I want to have a conversation. And I love you and, you know, correct. And that's applying it in a different context. So, mm -hmm. so we're taking it out of the yes, no, you know, energy, but into how do you make a request? Correct. Yeah. And so that's, that's really, really interesting. So let's go with this one. All right. So I've got yes and. All right, try, can't, button, however, no, what's next? The next one is one of my favorite uh, words, I think uh, we use this a lot. I have a problem, I have an issue. And with those two words, I, I said you would need to replace it with, I have a challenge, right? Um, a problem or an issue, when you think about that, is something like, wait, th there's this, this wall of mechanism, this, there's this defensive wall that I don't want to deal with that. When you, when you think of a problem, it's something negative. When you think of an issue, you don't want to attack it. You don't want to solve it. You don't want to deal with it. If you change it to, I have a challenge, a challenge is something that we want to solve. You know, the human mind and, and, and us as humans, we love challenges. We want to, you know, face those challenges. We want to solve them. We want to create a solution. So instead of saying, I have a, cha a, 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 a issue or a, a problem, change it with a challenge. I often, any, anytime you hear me talking, those two words, I literally replace them. Um, I don't use them. It's always, I have a challenge, right? And so, again, it's positive connotation. All right, let's see. I'm going to keep this thought because I've got a lot of thoughts coming up. We're going to be talking about this in a much deeper way in just a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. So on this top level, being a problem solver, somebody has a problem, I'm all over it. But I hear you. A problem sounds way bigger than a challenge. And I have a question. Is actually a, even a softer energy than saying I have a challenge. I have a question with that. I have a question about that. Yeah. Um, so there are a lot of different ways. And I just want to be really clear. We're not talking about the boundary setting language that sometimes we need to start with if we have been in relationships that are challenged. You know, and, and it was put in the chat, what about no is a complete sentence? There's an appropriate place for that in our evolution mm -hmm. of using language appropriately. We're moving into the art of persuasion, which actually neuro-linguistic programming is one component of the art of persuasion. And persuasion is about gentleness. You're not gonna convince somebody using this language. Persuasion is about pulling in the direction that people already want to go in. And by the way, in sales, if you're trying to pull somebody and it's not the direction they already want to go in, let them go, they're not your peep. Okay, so that's Jackie's sales moment there. All right, so <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely. come back to the chat in just a minute. I wanna get the rest of the words. You got one more, what is it? So I have, yeah, I have a couple of more. Uh, the other one's if, right? If this goes as planned, if, if, if you're leaving things to, 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 to just hope, right? Be certain, right? If it's a state of mind of not being certain, you're not so uh, uh, good on that, how about you change that to when, right? If I uh, make an impact today, well, what about when I make an impact today or when I write that book or when I close that deal or when I decide to change my mind and my life? So instead of if, be certain, do it and just go with when. Got it. Okay, so replacing the word if with when. All right, I like that. Keep going. The next one is why, you know, instead of asking why, why how about we start asking how or what? You know, a lot of times, again, we use the word why to, to create a negative connotation. What about if we start asking how can I make this change or, or what do I need to do to make this change, right? 
or instead of playing the victim, you know, in, in uh, NLP, we talk about there's the, uh, the drama cycle. You have the perpetrator, you have the uh, victim, and then you have the rescuer. And the victim is always playing that why card. Why me? Why did this have to happen to me? Right? We got to be able to remove that instead of saying, why me? Like, how can I make this better for me? Mm-hmm. What do I need to do to c- come out of whatever challenge I'm going through right now? Got it. All right. So, yes. And why is one of those things that we're actually going to be talking about later as well? So, yeah. let's see. I'm going to reframe. Okay. I'm just going to read the list again. So, replace try with will, but however, with and, can't with either I'm willing to, even if I don't know how, I'll figure out how, or I'm not willing to, Mm -hmm. replace no with yes and Mm -hmm. together, as if it's something that you're not willing to do, and the goal is a relationship with someone, then switch it to yes and. Um, And then instead of I have a problem or an issue, I have a challenge Mm -hmm. or a question, something even a little softer. Mm -hmm. Um, Replace if with when. Mm -hmm. When this happens, then will, Mm -hmm. instead of if this happens. So I get that. And the if then, which is the decision-making tree that we use in, we use that language in computer programming. And really what they mean is when. Right. When is, the end, is, is the end result. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then instead of using the word why, which that's one of those questions that is guaranteed to pull up a lot of emotion from many, mm-hmm. many people. So letting go of that one is a really good idea. Replacing it with how or what. Mm-hmm. And sometimes if you can't figure out how to replace why, when you're asking somebody, why did you do that? If you can't figure out a way to replace that with a how or a what that makes sense, perhaps it's not a question you need to be asking. Just saying. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to get into questions. So go ahead and pop them into the chat. And Caesar, keep going. What you got? Yeah. So the, the, next, word, question, uh, the next word, I would say uh, resolutions or goals, right? Uh, and, I, and, and this is one of the, the, those that I myself see like every year, we tend to do new year resolutions, right? Um, or uh, companies, a lot of companies talk about having goals, except it's deeper than that. We gotta look at it from a different perspective. Um, if you think about uh, new year resolutions, the first month or two, people tend to like, yep, yeah, I have all this big old list. And one or two months into the year, you haven't done anything in the list and you forget about it and you're like, you wait until the next year, right? And so what if we start changing that and instead of saying, uh, resolutions or goals, how about we change that to targets or plans? I have a plan. I have a target. Why is that so critical? In my opinion is because you can do a couple of things and I can, and then I can take this to a, a whole different aspect. And I'm just going to give you some really quick um, tips to that. When we're thinking about tips and, 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 and target plans, there's a couple of things that go into that. Number one, you have to start with the end in mind. Number two, you have to attach a date a specific date against that. Number three, you want to take that bigger task and you want to chunk it down, get smaller tasks and create actionable items against that, right? And the last thing is you want to create a KPI, a key performance indicator or some some sort of um, measuring tool that you can measure your performance, right? So when you take all of those different aspects into that and then you start taking action, you are more likely to actually accomplish that task that target, that plan, right? I'll give you another example. Um, you're, uh, you're a developer, right? And I'm giving you all this money and I want you to build a house for me. And you're the developer and you're, you're telling me, well, I have a goal to build you this house and my resolution is to do this or that, right? That's where words do matter. I'm like, no, wait, I, I, don't, I, I don't necessarily care so much about your goal. Show me the plan. What is the plan? What is the ah, thank you. <laughs> objective there? You get me? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, you're absolutely right. I would want to see the how. I would want to see the plan for right. how they were going to do this. Okay. So that's a really cool application. As we're yes. going down, uh, you got time for a question? Yes, Before definitely. Please. Okay. Yes. The word that came up was just, J-U-S-T. 
And we're not talking about just as injustice. Okay. Yeah, um, there's, the sentence I think is more about referring to myself, like if I was saying I'm just Jackie. Mm. Yeah, so that's I, the question. I wanna make sure that we get to that because it's an interesting word. It, it definitely is. And I think it's, it's, you know, thinking about it now, it might be one of those words where um, it's, it's gonna label, it's gonna create some sort of label, right? And I think that sometimes creating labels can be very um, challenging because they can be, uh, to an extent, uh, 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 it's given more power than, than they should, right? In, oh, in don't that- do it on yourself on my show. <laughs> don't do it on yourself here. I- I'll-, I'll tell you what, I'll rescue you because yeah. it- you'll get some pushback in the chat for, for using the should. Um, so let's do it this way. Labels limit us. Mm-hmm. I think that-, that that's the energy of a label. So just as in just Jackie, would be labeling myself as something that's diminishing. Yes, and then that's where I was going with that, right? You, you, you definitely have something uh, a lot bigger and greater than that. So I hardly use that word. I probably wouldn't use that because again, for me, it's more about certainty, you know, being, being, being able to, to know who and what I am in, in, that, in that case, I'm just Jackie or Caesar. Um, I wanna make sure that I don't use that because there's bigger beyond that. Right, so I, I don't I don't think I would use that word in in my opinion. Even even through the it. yeah, so I mean even, even through through the NLP aspect of that, I w- I would uh, definitely change that to more something like. Um, so let's see. I'm looking at the chat. I use NLP. Too. Okay, yeah, it's just it's the word just. That's what I was just yeah. reading. To you. Yeah. Okay, got you. Okay, there we go. That's what I was just reading to you. That makes sense, except that it it does have a languaging challenge in it. Yeah. If I said that sentence again. I would say I am, I am, I am, I am powerful. I am, I am this. I mean, I would probably change that to, to that something to that extent because it's more powerful than just, just. I'm more than just, just. It, it's, it's an interesting discussion with that word because there's really nothing that makes sense to put in its place unless I'm going to say, I'm the amazing Jackie. You know? Yeah. Um, I'm, you know, yeah. The, the, there is I, I, not I, I, another I, adjective. That yeah. Fits. Where the heck did we get this dimin dimini- this, this thing diminishing? Diminishing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I think you're right. It, it comes down to how are you using that word and finding something that is going to substitute it. I, I wouldn't use that because again, it's very diminishing to to to, to that aspect. Mm-hmm. So it's an interesting place to be. So yeah. All right. Yeah. So good good catch, and thank you all for sharing that. We have covered a lot of words that matter. What are some words we, if you, do you have any more that we should take out? Because otherwise I want to go to what do you want, what would we be helpful, what would be good for us to add? Yeah, de- definitely. I mean, I have three more and I can go through them really quickly. Oh, we got time. Um, take your time. Yeah. If, if you talk fast enough. If you go really quickly, I'm not going to be able to keep up. Um, so so uh, another word is uh, worry, right? We're, we're, constantly worrying and that can create uh, so many different things in our in our mind and mm-hmm. so instead of worrying about whether or not this is a good show whether or not this is whatever right I, there's so many different things instead of worrying that I do a good job talking to uh, my my friend or doing a presentation how about you start wondering right take that negative aspect of that to a positive aspect and say you know what I wonder how much value people are taking from this show for being here today. I wonder how much people are taken away by reading one of my books. I wonder how much I'm impacting people's lives by bringing some value, right? Mm-hmm. Wonder is, is a positive thing, you know, from that perspective. So uh, don't worry, wonder more. Don't worry, <laughs> wonder more. There we go. We rewrote the whole song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, All right. So after worry, what's next? Doubt. You know, you, you, I'm, I'm doubting. I'm, 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 I have the doubt. Uh, instead of doubting, be determined. Have the determination, right? Uh, be going back to the word that I used before, being certain, right? Um, and, and, and again, a lot of times we're looking at it from different aspects, and, and I'm doubting whether or not uh, I'm doing a good job. Well, how about if I'm determined that I am doing a good job, right? That I'm doing the best I can. Uh, again, a lot of these words come down to. You're changing that 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 frame, right? That mm-hmm. a negative frame, or not so positive frame in your mind, 
to start being more certain, more determined, more like I am doing a great deed here. That's an interesting thing. My brain went into different sentences that I could use that with. And I was going, huh, um, I doubt it will work out is the first one that came to mind. Mm. And I'm like, I'm determined it will work out has a very different energy. It also implies that it's important enough that I'm going to put energy into it. Correct. Which means that if, I, if that's not true, I would probably not talk about it at all. Mm -hmm. If I can't go from doubt to determine, it's likely that I'm not even going to get into that conversation. I've become yep. very selective in where I put my time and talent and my treasure lately. Yeah. So, okay, so from doubt to determined, I can see how powerful that is. All right, I'm ready, lay it on me. I have one more and that's uh, stress. We're stressing out, right? And that, uh, again, you can see that in many different aspects, we're stressing about the kids, we're stressing about the job, we're stressing about not having money, we're stressing about many different things. One thing that I've learned even through my journey is that rather than stressing, how about you just surrender, right? And surrender in the sense of not giving up, surrender in the sense of, let me surrender and understand what I have in front of me, analyze what I have in front of me, and rather than stressing in, a, in, in that negative connotation, I'm going to surrender to look for a solution. Because the way it works too is that our mind, our bodies, the way it works is that when you're stressing out, you're not really thinking. You're, all, all is going through your head is all these negative thoughts, mm -hmm. right? When you're surrendering, you open up the possibilities. You, you activate a different uh, part of your brain that is not going to start giving you ideas. It's going to start giving you the possibilities of, of the solutions to that challenge. Yeah, I love the way you worded it. So, I mean, I, I know that you could use this in a lot of different ways. Right. Surrender and understand. Or surrender mm -hmm. to understand, even. Um, that, for me, is a very powerful connection. Because understanding is the basis of being able to change something. We cannot change what we're not aware of, and we cannot change easily what we do not understand. So surrender to understand is a very powerful language. So you would tell us a little bit about your journey, because that's what you alluded to. You said because of your journey, you learned some of these things, because some of these are not things I would have ever gotten out of a book. So yeah. what was your journey? Steve? I would say in this particular content, the very first time that I felt that I surrendered to the process and I, and I stepped back and, and, and wanted to analyze it and, and, and surrender to that and say, okay, what is next for me? Mm -hmm. I can, I'm, I'm going to take you back when I was 10. Okay. And okay. It, it was a lesson that I've learned now. I looking back, I realized like, that's what I did uh, unconsciously. I was 10. I'm originally from Mexico city. I came to the States. I, at that time, I couldn't, I had no friends. I couldn't speak the language. I couldn't write. I couldn't read. I was a very angry person. There are definitely a lot of words that were going through my mind that were not serving me, right? And uh, one of the things that I think came to realize is that I'm like, I don't fit in. This is not where I need to be. I need to go back to Mexico, uh, have that life that wasn't even promising. Nevertheless, one thing that I did, though, is at that time, I sat back and I said, you know what? Let me surrender. Let me surrender to the process. Let me surrender to the current situation. Let me surrender to what is in front of me. And how can I change that? How can I change that frame? And um, I did. I did do that. And, and I think that once I was able to uh, accept that, things changed for me. And, and in the sense of I began to have friends. I began to learn the language. I began to, to do all the things that I didn't think I can do. At one point, I just wanted to go back. And so again, throughout, throughout my journey, I've, I've seen many of those things where I had to surrender. I had to surrender to the circumstances. I had to surrender to society. I had to surrender to many different things and then evaluate those things and make the mental shifts and, and, and the positive shifts to be able to continue to move forward. Okay, so there's a key emotional elephant since emotional element Mm -hmm. Elephants are out. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, that harks back. I mean, this is part of our whole journey with the mission that we're on. What for me was came to mind the first step, and you your idea of surrender, which took you out of anger, it took you out of the fight or flight part mm -hmm. of the emotional component of life. And I'm really sometimes a little more blunt, and what I came to my mind was 
stop arguing with reality. Mm -hmm. You know, the mm -hmm. reality at 10 years old is that you might not have had the resources to take yourself back to Mexico City. Yeah. Um, so the reality, you, you stopped arguing with reality. And so surrender is a one word way of expressing that. And I need both because there are some things that I think I would be very willing to surrender to mm -hmm. um, and come into acceptance, which is the second key to everything. The first key is awareness. The second key for me is acceptance. There are some steps in the middle there. But for me, I had to get myself to stop arguing mm -hmm. with what was real. That whole thing of the reason that the word should comes up so much around me is because when I was thinking life should be something other than what it was, than what was real, that was really happening, that kept me in a place of emotional turmoil. It kept me in a place of dysfunctional mm -hmm. relationships. It kept me in a place that was not happy. And so stop arguing with reality, surrender and understand, surrender to understand. This is really powerful use of language um, and on all fronts, Caesar. So you were 10 and things started turning around when you surrendered, but you have other turnaround points. So we've got a little bit of time. Go ahead and talk to us because <laughs> this, it was so much fun. Okay, so when you were talking about determined and um, you know, go from doubt to determined and someone else popped in their commitment. And I'm like, I know so many people who that's a C word and they are not interested in discussing commitment. There's a difference between commitment and determined. So let's play with words. What's the difference between commit, committed and determined? I think committed is, is doing things regardless of, of in my opinion, regardless of, of what's going on, you're committed to making that work, right? And so mm -hmm. I, I, if I share that with my own journey, it's like when I decided to take my own leap of faith and, and, and go full time as an entrepreneur, leaving everything behind, the, the good money, the pay, all that stuff, I was committed at that moment to do whatever it took for me to get the, the, the job done mm -hmm. at whatever cost, right? And so uh, commitment can be seen even through our history in, in many different aspects, whether it's negative or positive through leaders, leaders that have been positively impacting the, the communities or negatively uh, impacting the communities. It comes up to, to that commitment. Um, and so uh, it is one of those state of minds where you're going to do whatever it takes to get it done. Determination though, uh, I think is probably, it goes hand on hand with, with, with uh, being committed and, and except I think it takes you to more of a, a bigger, broader point of view of seeing what are the different steps, what are the, the, the determining factors, what are the, the different aspects that I need to do to, to get to the next level in, in, in whatever I'm doing, right? And so I think it's more detailed, more, 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 more uh, organized per, per, perhaps. Okay, so one is about, and someone said it's a decision, commitment is a choice. Um, and so one is more about the actual outcome and mm -hmm. commitment is to an outcome determined is like so the, the actions, the test process. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. The actions, right. the process. And, and so the conversation about words gets really deep, really fast sometimes. And sometimes it stays here in this realm of is commitment a decision? Is it an emotion? is determined a decision or is it an emotion? And we were playing with emotional words earlier. Mm. And I think that, you know, we can uh, be determined, we can be committed, and we can also be happy with either one. And that's where I'm gonna leave that and, and get myself out of this debate that I inadvertently <laughs> started in my head. All yeah. right. So we have gone on the journey from uh, everything from try and to stress. And there's a lot of really interesting things that I'm gonna point out right now. When you all are listening to stories on the radio, reading a newspaper, mm -hmm. look for these words. Look for the words that are inflammatory because inflammation in our thinking and our emotions is just as 
dangerous as inflammation in the body that we were talking about with Dr. L. So look for where other people are using this kind of language and what would their sentence look like if you replaced it? This is gonna be a fun game. We're gonna have your know, words with friends. We're gonna add a new <laughs> layer to that whole game. Because what if someone says, I doubt it, and you go, what are you determined to? Mm -hmm. So instead of arguing with the word that they use, you just ask them the, the, neck, the, the flip of the question. If someone says, I'm stressed, you can say, what is it you're not understanding? You know, what is it you could understand? What's, what's, what's the thing you could surrender to to understand? Let's start playing people with how to apply this. So we've got just a couple of more minutes. If you've got another question, pop it into the chat for Caesar. And Caesar, I know you've got something you want to say. Yeah, and, and one of the things that I want to say, and just to add to that, is that, again, we got to be very careful again, when we're talking to ourselves or to other people. So as you're um, taking these words and you're changing the, the replacing the words or just changing the meaning, if you find yourself talking about a word that, you know, you have to remove from your vocabulary, go back immediately and fix yourself. So like, for instance, if I say, man, today I had a, a big issue, um, go back and change that. Uh, no, today I had a big challenge because what you're doing is you're, you're telling the unconscious mind that, no, that was not the right type of content. I'm going to go back and fix it. So fix it in, the, in, in that moment. Even if you're conversating with people, just fix mm -hmm. yourself. You know, that's number one. The second thing too is when you're getting uh, people that are speaking to you and if they're projecting something that doesn't fit with your vocabulary or with the words that we just learned, you know, mm -hmm you can also go back and kind of fix that. You know, uh, if somebody says, you know, uh, everybody is, is, is always having issues and you can go back and say, not everybody. Some might have some challenges, not me, right? Again, you're reinforcing that. The second thing is uh, looking at the words and, and just in general, right? There's about 60,000, 60,000 thoughts that are going through our head on a day-to-day -day basis. Wow. Okay? Out of those 60,000 thoughts, 80% of them are negative, right? Only... And, and so with, with that, uh, you, 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 you have to be very, very careful when it comes down to that. 95% of those thoughts are thoughts that you were thinking about yesterday. They're repetitive uh, thoughts, right? Wow. So we have to be very, very conscious of, again, uh, the things that are going through our heads, how we're speaking, just changing the content. All right. I'm going to be conscious of something. How would someone get more information? I know we've got a gift for them, and I'm going to mm -hmm. put that in there right now. This is something you guys can just go grab. But if somebody wanted to have more conversation with you, Caesar, if they wanted to follow you, yep. I mean, I know you're in the VIP lounge. You yep. know, so people can interact with you there because you are a very inspiring person. Thank you. But what, where, where else would they find information for you? Yeah, the, the best place to, to find information is on my website, uh, www.caesarrespino.com. And I you can think. definitely find yeah. R Espino. Yep. So C E S A R R S P N O. dot com. Well, I can't even spell C E S A R. And then R S P N O. Mm -hmm. S P N O. dot com. Yep. Okay. So somebody's just told me that I put up the wrong um, freebie. Sorry about that. Give me just a second. I'll figure out what I did wrong with that. Obviously. <laughs> um, no, this is the right one. Um, so the, good. I got the right one up there. So. We're good. Um, and rspino.com. So cool. All right. So your name at C E S A R, the letter R mm -hmm. in the middle of that, mm -hmm. espino.com, mm -hmm. which yes. is what confused me. I had everything spelled wrong because I had kept the R with the espino. Ah, uh, yeah. okay. Gotcha. All right. yeah. And now I got that figured out. So that explains how that happened in my brain. All right. So the one pager of words that matter, good to get, okay? Everything that you couldn't take notes on while we were talking, he's got it for you. And Caesar, thank you so much for being part of this movement, part of this journey, for supporting all of our VIPs with your presence and for supporting the Teen Suicide Prevention Society and the Make It A Great Day movement. You gave us a platform um, you interviewed me on your show, which was so yeah. much fun. That's how we got to know each other. Yes. And 
you're just, you're such a delight. And the number of, cause you work, your, your goal is to work with kids and to bring all of this into yeah. their world. So we'll be having more conversations that matter and we'll be having you back. But today was just very special and I just can't thank you enough for being here. Thank you, Jackie. I really appreciate being here. Thank you so much. You're welcome.